Hello, 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 guys. So tonight we are going to speak about um, how to start your commodity firm the right way. So tonight we are going to see. Uh, first, I'm going to speak about my experience uh, experiences as uh, to start a commodity firm because as of now, I think I started yeah maybe four. Yeah, but one was a complete. Though let's say three for sure, three. Uh, and I'm going to give you my experiences about that. Then we are going to see uh, the private equity way to start a commodity trading firm. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to explain uh, what I've been doing, which is what I call the bootstrapped bootstrap bootstrap way, which is when you don't have infinite amount of financing, how you, you do it, what is the best way to start in terms of money, knowledge, and, and how you to tackle the best opportunities. So um, if you guys have like any question, just ask uh, during the live and then I will uh, try to reply um, as soon as I'm finished it or I've finished with the sentences. Um, yeah, so let's do it. So first, my experiences. I think if you are new on this channel, maybe you haven't seen this uh, video, but this is me just explaining how I started my very, very first own commodity businesses. Um, and knowing that I was already a trader in another company, but I wanted to start something on, my, on the side. So this is why I... I, uh, I named this video Commodity Trading Side also. And basically, I explained how I found my, almost found my very first deal, um, which was like a trading um, poly, poly, polypropylene. This is a type of, um, of polymer, of, of plastics. So, yeah, so everything in this video. So, guys, you can, uh, I will put the link in the description below. But this is how I started my very, very first uh, company on my own when I was a very, very young buck. Then, um yeah then i started as uh okay so just to finish about that uh, company um i started it when the price of the oil was very very high so that's mean that the recycling the recycling plastic was quite of interest of a lot of uh, buyers but then when the price of uh, oil uh got uh, went down then for most of the buyers it was no interest to buy recycled or recycled plastic because they could have like cheaper virgin plastic directly from uh, from the refinery. So yeah, so basically my business just died like this. But as I said, it was something that I did on the side of my of my job. So if I, I couldn't really attempt to, to find other, other trade flows and so on. When yeah, the price just crashes, I like, like, yeah, this is a sign of the time. I need to to <laughs> to close it. Uh, now, and after that, <clears throat> I opened another business. Um, this was in, uh, in Senegal, West Africa. Or basically, we were importing those type of um, of, uh, of oil. So this is cooking um, cooking oil out of Malaysia, and then we were distributing it. So uh, I had like big hope with these businesses. I had like a very very solid um, a plan to how to expand, how to get better margin, and so on. But what did happen is that like my partner, so my local partner, the guy which I put like a big a big red uh, square. On, the, on his face, I just uh, uh, stole the money from me. So it was me, an investor, and him. And he basically, yeah, stole the money and fucking ran away with it. And w one thing that was extremely, extremely difficult. So, first, yeah, you, when you get to say, like, look uh, to the guy that uh, invested, uh, that uh, trusted in you, that, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the guy just uh, fucking stole the money. It was not easy. But the, the most difficult part was also that. Uh, as you can see with my smile here, I'm extremely charming. So the uh, I managed to get extremely, extremely good payment term from a bunch of uh, suppliers. Uh, we were basically running uh, on credit. And then when um, I said that, look, the, the money was gone, they basically sold that I was uh, stealing from them and that, that I stole the money. So that was extremely, extremely difficult. Um, uh, yeah, the difficult part. But, you know, this is... Uh, how we say in business, uh, you lose or you learn. So I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot. So, so this is other business, uh, another business, but that failed uh, because of my partner that sold the money. Then uh, there's a business that, that we are starting right now. So uh, if you followed me on my last um, on my last uh, live broadcast, I said that we have a team now in Congo that was basically uh, getting um, copper cathode and tin. So we are um, for, for the cup of cathode. It's kind of paused right now because we, we found like a, a better actually a better 
a bit of opportunity on the on the side when we went there. And this is this uh, pile of shit that you can see here. So this is basically scrap. And uh, the opportunity that we found is we found that we can go to the mines and instead of buying um, directly the, the commodities out of them, we can buy this bunch of scrap, this scrap. So because the mine, they use a lot, a lot of uh, materials, equipment. And in Congo, you know, they don't really recycle or anything. So this is why there's people that buy the scrap from them uh, <clears throat> and then ship it to a recycler. So we saw this opportunity and we saw that the margin was, uh, was actually great. So, and this is something that we could uh, we could do that didn't really require a lot, still a lot of money, but it's not as much as if you need to buy for 1 million of copper. So, uh, yeah, so we started this and then we are just ramping up and we are in the process of making it like, uh, because right now it's quite, um, I can say, artisanal business and we are just uh, processing it uh, and uh, making it like a, a scalable as much as possible. So, uh, yeah, so this is a third business. So as you can see, uh, I have like a bunch of experiences uh, with starting commodity trading business. So uh, I will tell you like everything that I know. <laughs> uh, so at least that what I think is the best way to start. So first, let's speak about the private equity road. So this is the way that um, very successful, I would say extremely successful commodity traders coming from like a large company. Uh, start a company. Basically, now that you need millions of equity to just get uh, lined out of a, a, a bank, you cannot really do what a bunch of su successful traders did 20, yeah, I even would say like uh, 15 years ago or 10 years ago, which is like taking two, three million in equity uh, that you have because, I don't know, you got a good bonus or whatever, and then starting your own shop like that. Now it's impossible to do so, even though this is how a bunch, a bunch of uh, a firm started, uh, yeah, 10, 10 years ago. So now it's it's impossible because if you want to have credit line from banks and to be able to compete with uh, the other big guys out there, you need those credit lines. So that means that you need to, to have like a, at least 50 million of in equity, or I would even say like 100 million of equity. And how how do you get that money? I mean, this is, you don't. <laughs> I mean, so the way that uh, now... I saw two companies doing that. Is that you go to see a, a big private equity firm, a firm that has billions under management, and then uh, you say, "Look, guys, uh, if you want to have exposure to commodity trading, uh, I could be the guy. Um, I've been the running the trading platform of Glencore, Trafigura, or Vitor, or another big company for years. I know everyone, and now I want to, to set my uh, own shop. But actually, it's going to be the, the private equity money, but still." Uh, and let's uh, let's fucking do it. So um, I've seen two companies started like this, and both of them are extremely extremely successful. They grew extremely fast because they had all the credit line, and they were like uh, ag more aggressive than um, their counterparty. So if you want, if you believe, if you believe that commodity tra trading is what is happening at the big firm, this is uh, the road that uh, you, you need to take. Uh, but obviously, convincing someone to give you fifty million in equity. <laughs> I mean, you need to have an extremely, extremely uh, big track record and it's uh, not that easy. But I've seen a bunch of uh, companies starting like this. So, but this is done by case and this is, I can only tell you what I've seen. Now the bootstrapped, bootstrapped road. So this is the way that I've done it and that I've seen a lot of friends doing it. So this is what you do when you don't have million in equity. So you need to be uh, a bit smart about the way that you approach the business because obviously you can't go where all the other big guys are. So first thing that I want to say about the bootstrapped world as a bootstrapped way is um, the capital. What is the amount of money that you need to start? So sadly, because <laughs> I think a lot of people think that they can start with no money, it's going to be extremely difficult to, to start with, um, with, uh, with almost no money uh, as capital. Um, I, I know one guy that did that and props to him, but this is a savage, a savage but, <laughs> but yeah, but it's very, very difficult. So what I would say is that you need at least enough capital to pay for one shipment or one truckload or one, I don't know, whatever you trade, you need to be able to have enough things to trade one, um, one shipment on its own. So that means that you need to use your own capital to do the first deal uh, because it's going to be extremely, extremely difficult. Um, to start from scratch and trying to think that you can get the money from um, uh, 
uh, yeah, from your counterparties or whatever. So um, I would say that, uh, uh, okay, so just, so th this, is, this is my wife, uh, so by the way, so uh, thank you, thank you, dear. Anyway, so, <laughs> um, and that was not a joke, actually, that was, so, and capital, so yeah, so you need at least um, the enough capital to start with one shipment, what truckload of whatever commodity you want to, you want to trade. So this is what we did with the cooking oil that I showed you earlier. I had only money to start to, to do one, uh, one, uh, one containers of cooking oils, and I think the price was 20,000 US dollars, something like this, it wasn't that high. So I, I had to fund that money. And also right now for the scrap, I think one truck, depends on the type of scrap that you do if, uh, but it's around 50, 50 K or something like this. So this is money that you need to invest. I mean, uh, this is what I think. If you want at least to, to get it started because you need some type of track record and the track record is something that you need to find. Um, I mean, to, to create with your own money or at least with an investor or someone that you, uh, that you know that is willing to, to be, uh, to help you with your track record. So. Minimum amount of capital would say that it's one at least at least one truckload or one container of one of the thing that you want to, to trade. Then the cost of running your business, and this is the one that um, I spoke with with another guy that had a company and he did not really agree with me. But you know he started with a lot of money from his parents, so I mean I know better than you. <laughs> so I started from with nothing. So um, yeah, so I would say that the cost of running your business must be when you start, of course, when you start. You must be sure that with the first deal, let's say a deal takes you 30 days, you need to make sure that this margin that you are going to get is going to cover the cost of running the business. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you need to have like a team of people or one people or two people that are doing the sourcing or are doing the selling, whatever, you need to make sure that this team is going to be paid with the margin from the from the shipment that can happen during this month. So uh, I, I do not believe that if you if your cost of running business is higher than that, if you, are, you need to say, I, I'm going to scale, I need to do at least this volume. So then my cost of uh, uh, running my business is going to be covered, so I'm not losing money. This is going to be extremely, extremely difficult and you are most likely going to lose all of your money. So this is why if you want to start really in a bootstrapped way, you need to to have your customer business running your business extremely extremely low ideally it's only your your time and i don't know if you need to pay for for travel to see customers suppliers you need to be there to be uh to um to 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 oversee a shipment or some that but this and this cost must be covered with the margin of what you are, go, are going to do so uh, of, of one trade so if you can do two trades in one month but if your cost of doing the running the business needs to be Below, they say that this two trade. If you can do only one trade per month, then your cost of doing a running business must be below the margin of that trade. Is it clear? And I think this is extremely important. I mean, this is my rule. And uh, and <clears throat> but I, I do believe that losing money um, with commodity trading, uh, being like uh, in the red for like six months when you don't have a lot of uh, of money to invest, this is extremely bad. So and I've seen a lot a lot of people losing money like this. So that's my rule. Then. Uh, knowledge. So, another part. What is the right level of knowledge that you need to know if you want to start your commodity trading? So, to, to give you like um, some some information, I think there are a lot of people that are completely dealies, that have no idea the, the, the what it requires to be successful as uh, a commodity trading company, and the, I don't know why they believe that uh, they can they can make it on its own by finding suppliers, a guy on LinkedIn or whatever. I don't know where, where this is coming from, but <laughs> it's obviously not true. And then, um, because look at it. <clears throat> when I was uh, trading 100% of the time, full-time as, as an employee, I was uh, specialized on the West Africa and I sold there a lot, a lot of milk powder. So the milk powder, you know, uh, uh, the milk from the core, we dry it and then we ship it to, to Africa. I think <clears throat> on that region, on that region, um, I must, I was, I think, the top five uh, guys in the world that knew the most about milk powder in this region. 
Seriously, I was doing that every fucking day for five years. I knew all the country. I went to all the country. I knew all the big buyers there. I knew um, how the market was structured in all of those small countries. I mean, I knew I knew everything. So I spent five years focusing on that. And yeah, I, I, basically, I think I was in the top five in the world uh, in these niches, which is a meat powder in West Africa. Um, and this allowed me to gain market, uh, market uh, to gain market, to be profitable, to increase my book of clients, and so on. So I had basically the knowledge nine out of ten for that specific reason. And now my question to you is like, when I see like people that said, "Oh, look, Damien, I want to do milk powder uh, to West Africa and so on," um, I, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, okay, but do you know what you are doing? Because in front of you, you are going to have like people like me, like I was like 10 years ago, that, that are spending all day long on that specific market, that know everything. And my question is, how, what makes you think that you are going to beat those guys? Seriously, that you are going to, fin- to find better price, that you are going to find better quality, quality, that you really even understand the quality that require each type of client. Uh, this is why, I, even though on the paper, it seems... Simple, what the traders do. Okay, I'm going to buy there. I'm going to sell there. I'm going to take my margin. But you make money in the minutia. You make money because you know the details. You make money because you are better than your competition. And what is the the way that you can get... And how do, do you think that you are going to get better than, than someone that is spending like the last five days, or the last five years, the last 10 years doing this every day, 10 hours a day? There is no way. There is no way that you know, know them more than them. So just t- t- think about it when you want to start something, when you see an opportunity, think about the competition. Because you are not doing a startup. You are not inventing something, creating something new, that's something you want to use, that's something that people never never seen. No, you are doing what every other guy is doing. So you must have an edge over them. If you don't have an edge, does it really make sense to do it? Think about that. So the best way to move from a complete amateur to a pro is, uh, first it takes time, but is to talk. You need to talk with as much people as possible. This is the only way that you are going to learn how the market works. So, and all, and if there are like young, young guys here, like, like those, those uh, generation, like uh, 20 something that, you know, are fucking afraid of speaking with people because they spend the, the whole life in front of a, a, a little phone. I don't know what they are going to do. Uh, I, I mean, so because the only way is to speak with people. So you need to speak with all the suppliers that you can find. So that means you need to speak with them. You need to speak with all the potential buyers that you can find. You need to speak with the, the um, inspection company so they can explain to you what they do, who they work with. You need to speak with freight forwarder. You need to speak with um, consultant because there is always consultant in the industry. Usually it's an older guy that now do consulting. You need, you need, you basically need to speak with all the most people possible so then you can understand what is going on in this market. Um, one of, uh, in one of my activity, for instance, we are going to set up a fund to, to finance voluntary carbon credit. Voluntary carbon credit, this is emission credit. But anyway. So this is something that I didn't know like a year ago. And now basically every day I'm, I'm, I speak with at least two people from that industry, project developers, traders, financiers, exchanges, blah, blah, blah. So the, and this is how I create my, my, my base knowledge, by speaking with people. So the only way to become, to, uh, to, to be like a pro is you need to do so, but when you begin, of course, you do that. Uh, you can you cannot uh, trade if you if you don't know what you're doing. But the, the only way is to speak with as much people as possible, and and of course read. But uh, obviously, uh, you know that commodity it's very difficult to find uh, information online because most of the knowledge is in companies and they don't want to share it. So now I'm going to speak about the opportunity. How do you um, do you how do you find an opportunity that could be workable, uh, that could start. How do you find an opportunity uh, for a bootstrapped business, for a business with really, really um, a, a small amount of, uh, of fun to start? So first thing, rule and term, thing that doesn't work. This is if you think that you are going to buy FOB and that you are going to sell CFR or CIF 
or any type of uh, FCA, CIF, or any type of income term, extremely simple, like buying from someone that know how to export and selling from to someone that know how to import. Man, you are just kidding yourself. Man. So, <laughs> unless it's a very, very specific commodity, I would even say this is not a commodity, but it's an ingredient of a very specific raw material that would make sense. Um, the, there is no way that you spend time on pursuing those type of opportunity because the market is taking is already taking care of that, uh, and there is no margin in that type of FOBC uh, contract, or at least a very, very small margin. So. To start, you're probably never going to, to make money by doing FOBSIF FOBS uh, deal, uh, unless it's a very niche market. Because can you can imagine in sugar, in rice, in uh, in all those big metals. I mean, there's traders that know their stuff, that's been doing that for years, that have way more money than you, that are basically on that trade. So what does it make you think that you can get margin with the other guy, big guys that are way more sophisticated than, than, than you, that have way more money than you? Uh, uh, Make barely make barely make very small margin. So, FOBC for opportunity, just um, um, yeah, just don't really spend time with that because I can tell you 99% of the time you, you will not end up making money or making any deal. Uh, and if you don't know what FOBC means, I mean, that's mean that you probably need my shipping in commodity academy courses because I mean, this is quite basic, guys. Then, other um, things that I wouldn't really spend, spend time trying to pursue is um, dealing with big players, like big mines, big processing factories, big entity, like, I don't know, big companies like Nestle, this, this is Agri and so on. Don't really spend time dealing with them because the thing is you need to understand that big players as uh, do business with other big players. And for a really, really, a lot of really good reasons, but that's mean that even though you can say like I can get an offer from a, a big a big supplier, a big mine, or I can get a bid from uh, big buyers, I'm pretty sure there's almost no way that you can uh, that you can, that you can manage to to fulfill it or to find another leg of the of the trade uh, coming from those big players, because uh, those big players they are the one with the lowest cost uh, and they are the one with the most usually the most difficult payment term to 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 follow because uh, they, they are used to dealing with other big players that give them like credit uh, or so on. So usually at the very beginning, it's not a good idea to try to 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 create a business with one big players as a as a center of that. Of course, on the line, no, no, if you can make it happen, then of course do so. But at the beginning, pff, don't even spend time chasing them. So. When, I'm, when I say that, um, what I'm basically ex going back is always to this core principle that you need to understand. So the opportunity for traders down the supply chain is to de-risk the supply chain. So, And this is why dealing with big players, I mean, you are not going to get margin because most of the most of the trade is completely de-risk. Or dealing FOBCF, FOBCF, FCA, CIF, with people that know how to export and other people that know how to import on the other side, there is almost no margin because it's already pretty much the risk. So as a rule of thumb, you are going to get better margin. You are going to get more money the more you de-risk the, uh, the part of the, of the supply chain you are in. So if you, I don't know, you deal with, um, yeah, let's say that if you want to make money you need to focus on one very small to start to start you need to focus on one very small part of the supply chain and some somewhere extremely complicated to make this uh, extremely complicated so this is why we uh, we send the team uh, in uh, in congo because rdc it's very very this year it's very very difficult to do business there and so the, i'm almost pretty sure that we are going to find some opportunities because we well what other people perceive risk are everyone wants to steal from you there we think that we can um, we can reduce this risk and we have the knowledge and the know how to to navigate the this market so this is why if you want to start the best way is to find a very small part of the supply chain because smaller part of the supply chain means less less time to, to finance so that means that if you have only a limited amount of capital and you can make more deals because you need you need uh, less financing because if you need to finance i don't know a shipment that takes 90 days so that's mean that during three months you cannot do another deal 
So this is why focus on a very small part of the supply chain and focus on a place which is extremely complicated. So for instance, I don't know if you if you deal with a very, very, with a bunch of very small miners that are all crooks that have a reputation of stealing from their client and, and stealing from their client and so on, go deal with them because you are going to de-risk the supply chain. This is why you are going to make more money. Uh, same with the distribution. Usually, usually distribution have better margin when you need to come from one big lot in a lot of sublot and find a lot of clients. This is way more logistic intensive. This is way more complicated. So this is why also distribution have, have better margin. Um, and still, you are still in, in commodity trading in a way because you need to. You are always um, dealing with a product with which is which has a market that goes up or goes down. So that's also a risk. But distribution, this is also usually where you can find better margin, or uh, for instance, if you deal with uh, countries that are um, banned, uh, I don't know if you deal with Sudan, Iran, Venezuela, all those countries that are extremely, extremely difficult to navigate. If for whatever reason, you know, how you have your way there, you know how to exchange uh, the Forex uh, in the black market, how to, to send the money there, to get the money that, um, to navigate the, the penalties, the sanctions and so on. This is extremely complicated but if you have the know-how uh, to do so uh, you are going to make money so again if you start uh, a type of community trading firm bootstrap that with not a much not infinite capital and you cannot rely on banks to get finance at least at the beginning focus on a very very complicated part of the supply chain and put all your energy there you are not going to make money by doing what the other big guys are doing or by being in competition with companies that have been 20 years, 50 years, 100 years uh, doing this trade. Just don't kid yourself. So go where there is nobody. There's usually a good reason that there is nobody because it's fucking dangerous and there is a lot of risk. But you, through your knowledge, know, uh, through your knowledge, through your know-how, you will uh, evaluate the risk differently than the market. And then this is how you are going to make money. So the only thing that I want you to to remember from from that uh, that uh, small uh, video is that traders are being paid in proportion of the risk that uh, that they take so um, if the market deems that uh, it's highly risky to go i don't know work uh, in the cambodia or work in in uh, central africa or whatever but through your knowledge and your skills you know that you can make it work, uh, and you assess your um, you assess the risk uh, in a different way. Then you are going to get paid. So when the market thinks it's risky, there is bigger margin, there is less player, and if you can assess the risk differently, you are going to get paid. So uh, that's basically the yeah, how you find a, an opportunity in a supply chain. So yeah, that was it for for me, guys. Uh, if you have like any question, just feel free to put it uh, in the chat, um, and uh, yeah, I will do my best to answer. So, but first question that I have uh, to you guys, um, th does it make sense what I've uh, just uh, explained? So that as a commodity trader, you are getting paid in proportion of the risk that you take. And um, who assess the risk? I mean, who said what I'm going to be paid if I take this risk is basically the market. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> just let me know if this is not clear. Okay. Maybe explain in another way. Thanks, Harry. So Charles asked, which factors or aggregates do you use to assess the risk? 
So, <laughs> okay. um, this is this is not um, something that you can put like in a in a formula and say, oh, look, this is a risk. Usually, uh, risk come from um, payment term, logistics, uh, and uh, yeah, so mostly pay payment term and logistics. So, if this is highly complicated, you need to cross a lot of uh, countries. Um, uh, you can get like uh, I don't know. It's dangerous. Uh, the, the insurance cost uh, a lot. This is something that it's deemed risky, um, and usually uh, you can um, um, you can see when I, I said that okay, the market says that uh, the risk is high. This is only a question of a margin. So, for instance, if you are a small sub, uh, supplier out of Congo, a small mine out of Congo. You will have to sell your your stuff minus twelve compared to the minus twelve percent compared to the and this is like a, if it's copper you've got to sell your sell your copper cathode minus twelve percent and this is a lot compared to other supplier that can sell minus five minus four because no one wants to take the the risk to buy from you uh, at the price of uh, others big uh, big sellers and actually there is big mines in Congo that uh, they they sell minus four because everyone knows those mines they are owned by huge chinese company by glencore traffic blah, blah 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 and they know that there is like no problem to deal with them so the risk um is always going to be fine in the in the price What are you sort on participating in the value chain in addition to supply chain for a given commodity? An example processing it one way or another. I think I think this is great. I mean, if you can blend commodities together, process it commodities together, and so on. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense. And you can see that a lot of commodity trading house um, are actually doing so. They are buying companies that process the commodities. Um, but again, my only issue with that is the it's again another another uh, trade. I mean, another job, another um, job that you you need to 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 know because running a factory is not exactly the same as running um, a supply chain. So, uh, I, I again, I I've got nothing against it. But when you start to buy assets, that means where is this money coming from? What is the equity that that you need to put in the factory and so on? Right now, I really like the recycling business. I see. I think this is a, a great business um uh to be in but then if we need to buy machinery equipment it costs a lot of money how long does it take to amortize everything that we need to know a guy that have already run a recycling factory if we want to do so so yeah it, it's another business but I, I still think that this is great if you can make it make it so uh but yeah. Yeah, yeah ex exactly, exactly. So, um, margin are better in Africa because people, uh, market deemed it more risky to to deal with. That's uh, that's pretty much it. And you can see, for instance, if you look at the um, at the gold mine, uh, there is a lot of gold, uh, small gold mines that are uh, quoted on the Toronto Stock Exchange in in Canada. Um, and you can see that the gold mine in Africa usually are traded at a lower um, price that the gold mine in Canada or in the US just because the the risk factor is better is higher there so um so yeah but it, and again it's a question of perceived risk because maybe the market think the risk is be, is higher there but if you know well how it works for you it's not so Welcome. So guys, I'm going to stick, uh, I think, five more minutes. Um, if there's like any more questions, I will uh, gladly uh, answer them. And for the next time, I will not forget to send the reminder. <laughs>
So I think there is like no more question. I really wish you all a, a, a Merry Christmas. Yes, because I think I will not um, uh, do another live before Christmas. Uh, and yeah, a, a very good. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to do a live between Christmas and uh, the new, new year, but not nothing uh, in between. Um, and yeah. Um, I, there's two more questions actually. So uh, let me. Um, man, I, I think I, I saw people that are making a lot of money with Mongo and uh, Ananas and uh, so on. So logistic is not really the issue again, because now the, the yeah logistic is pretty much solved. So uh, it's cost more. If you need to use refer container, of course it's going to cost more. But logistic is not really the issue. Uh, up to you, man. Up to you. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, but uh, now you know, as I do a lot of stuff, uh, I have partners because um, yeah, I can't uh, handle everything on my own, and basically, I sp I use only my risk assessment in most of the business that I am, or my contacts or my networks. But uh, now I work with partners, but really up to you. Yeah, yeah, always, always. Okay, guys, I wish you a very nice day. Ciao.